I woke up to a tremendous noise and screams. The shaking was so intense that it felt like it reached my bedroom. I checked my phone to see if it was an earthquake, but there was no alert. It was still 4 o'clock in the morning. I calmly tried to figure out what was happening when I heard moaning coming from downstairs. I rushed to the source of the sound and found my mother-in-law collapsed near the staircase with a wine bottle lying beside her. I quickly understand what had happened. My mother-in-law always looked down on me as an uneducated and worthless daughter-in-law, and she drank until she passed out. She must have slipped on an empty wine bottle, lost her footing, and tumbled down the stairs. While I was in shock, my mother-in-law spoke to me in an intimidating voice. Hey! What are you doing? You're really useless. Stop dawdling and call an ambulance. Don't you understand the situation? I, I might have broken a bone. I'm sweating bullets. Hurry up. I panicked and quickly went to get my phone. As I grabbed it, I suddenly realized something. Could it be... My name is Katie. I am a housewife like anyone else. I got married to Tom a few years ago. I met my husband Tim at work. We didn't interact much while I was still at the company, but he approached me when I moved to a different building. We started dating from there, got married, and now here we are. Living with Tim was not flashy, but we were filled with small daily happiness. However, something happened that brought an end to those days. Tim's father my father-in-law passed away from a heart attack. He had never had any illnesses before and was in perfect health. No one had expected him to suddenly pass away. So it was a tremendous shock. Tim and my mother-in-law were visibly distressed. I couldn't leave my mother-in-law alone in that state. So after the funeral, Tim and I started living with her. However, my mother-in-law had some twisted characteristics. When we first started living together, she said, Thank you for living with me. I couldn't even imagine how she must have felt, having been left alone so suddenly. That's why I was determined to support her as much as possible, so that she could heal soon. As time passed, she started smiling more, and she began to regain her strength little by little. But then... An incident occurred during a dinner conversation. We were discussing something we saw on TV, when my mother-in-law laughed at me as if she was making fun of me. I think it was about some art pieces or something trivial. Apparently, my comment wasn't accurate, and she said, Oh my, Katie, did you really say that? <laughs> I've heard that some people make mistakes, but... I never thought there could be someone who actually did. At that time, we all laughed it off. But later on, my mother-in-law began to pry into my educational background. What's your highest level of education? Did you study science or humanities? What were your grades like? To be honest, I only graduated from high school, and my grades weren't particularly outstanding. I was always in the middle of the pack. The high school I attended wasn't an elite school either, just an ordinary public high school. When my mother-in-law heard this, she looked down on me and made a condescending laugh. If only I had asked about your educational background before you got married. Since you were the woman my son brought, I thought you must have graduated from at least a university. But to think you only have a high school diploma. I was a bit annoyed, but I tried my best not to show it on my face and endured it. From what I heard, my mother-in-law, as well as my late father-in-law, graduated from a famous university that everyone has heard of. Well, from their point of view, I must have been low educated. However, once you become a member of society, your educational background isn't everything. 
your character is tested in countless situations. But ever since then, my mother-in-law's catchphrase for me has been, "This is why high school graduates aren't good enough." She always found something to belittle me about, like how I calculate the cost of shopping, or my knowledge of current events in politics and economics. Her criticism about my low education even extended to things like not liking my cooking or how I do my cleaning and laundry. Why can't you understand what I'm saying? All right, you only graduated from high school, so you can't even understand words properly. It's really pitiful to have no education like you. Every time she said something like that, I wanted to retort. But whenever I showed even a hint of opposition, my mother-in-law would say something like this: "Are you saying that to me, who has been grieving for my husband? Do you have any empathy?" After being told this, I couldn't say anything anymore. However, these kinds of days continued, and I was nearing my mental limit. I thought about ask I thought about asking my husband to talk to his mother for me. The first time I confided in him. He said to me, "Katie, it's not your fault. Leave it to me." I wonder how much of those words of him meant to me. As promised by my husband, the bullying from my mother-in-law stopped for a while. But after a few weeks, my mother-in-law started to take out her anger on me even worse than before, since she was upset about being reprimanded by Tim. She didn't just criticize my cooking. But also threw away everything I put on the dinner table right in front of me. I keep telling you that your cooking is terrible, didn't I? Why don't you understand? I've been telling you over and over again. So why don't you get it? When she was in a bad mood, she would even say things like this: "You can't even cook. Yet you want to take my son away from me. This low, educated, immoral woman." Do you have any morals at all? My mother-in-law was beyond reason. Whatever I did, it seemed that nothing was to her liking. As her abusive words became more intense, I turned to my husband for advice more and more frequently. But this time, I had started to speak up against her insults to some extent. Please don't judge me. Based on my education alone. But no matter what I say, it doesn't seem to have any effect on my mother-in-law. My husband tried to talk to her and calm her down several times. But yesterday, he finally said something like this: "Hey, if mom is saying those things, maybe the problem is with you, Katie. I admit that mom is being hard on you, but maybe it's because you don't understand things properly. If that's the case." Then it's pointless for me to try to help you. You should handle it on your own. Meanwhile, my husband has been spending less and less time at home. He says he's busy with work, but he's probably just tired of being caught up in our fights. As a result, I'm becoming more and more isolated from my family. The harassment is only getting worse. My mother-in-law's swearing has become more frequent. Possibly due to her drinking, she didn't drink as much when my father-in-law was alive, but now she seems to be using alcohol to cope with her loss, drinking every day in her upstairs room. I'm constantly being summoned like a servant, being told to bring ice, dispose the empty bottles, and prepare snacks for her drinking sessions. As a result. My sleeping schedule is getting later and later. However, my husband also comes home late at night more often. He smells of alcohol and perfume just like my mother-in-law. Day after day, I'm being bullied by my mother-in-law and abandoned by my husband, and my mental state is finally reaching its limit. On this day, just like any other. My mother-in-law went back to her room after dinner to start drinking again. She yelled at me to bring her more wine, but I wondered why I had to obey her. At this point, 
there is no kindness left in me to try and stop her from drinking too much. I pretended not to hear and remained silent. However, my mother-in-law just kept getting more and more hysterical, without showing any sign of coming downstairs. You can hear me, right? You damn daughter-in-law! I'm telling you to bring more alcohol. What language do I have to speak for you to understand me? No matter what she said, I didn't react and just blocked my ears with my earphones, listening to music at maximum volume. Occasionally, I heard the sound of my mother-in-law throwing something outside the room, but I pretended not to notice. She can do whatever she wants. About an hour later, I took up my earphones. That the house was now quiet. As I approached the stairs and listened closely, I could hear her snoring slightly. Maybe if I didn't do anything, she would just pass out and go to sleep. In the end, she just wants to use me conveniently by finding excuses for everything. That's all there is to it. If this is how it's going to be, then starting tomorrow. I will ignore my mother-in-law's calls. I just have to endure a few more unpleasant days. The next morning, no.、Uh, I woke up to the sound of a loud crash and a scream, as if the room was shaking. At first, I thought it might be an earthquake, but after looking around, I realized that wasn't the case. Instead, I heard groaning coming from nearby. I followed the sound, to find my mother-in-law crumpled at the bottom of the stairs, with an empty wine bottle beside her. It was clear what had happened. She must have slipped on the bottle, and tumbled down the stairs. Normally, I would have collected empty bottles when I was cold, so there would have been no such danger. As I watched her writhing in pain, a strange feeling washed over me. It was as if I felt she was receiving divine punishment. My thoughts were interrupted by her barking orders at me, her tone one of intimidation. Hey, what are you doing? You, you were really useless. Stop torturing and call an ambulance. Don't you understand the situation? I might have broken a bone. I'm sweating bullets. Hurry up. I told her I understand, and went to grab my phone. As I did, I had a sudden idea. A few minutes later, I returned to my mother-in-law's side. Hey, how long do you think it'll take for the ambulance to come? She was pale-faced, and sweating profusely, writhing in agony. But there was something I had to tell her. My mother-in-law was waiting for me to speak. I'm sorry, I don't understand your language very well, so I can't call an ambulance. What? My mother-in-law looked at me, perplexed and confused about what was happening. But then, she quickly regained her composure and started yelling at me. What are you joking around? At a time like this, don't you understand? This is no laughing matter. My whole body hurts. It could be life-threatening. Don't you understand my pain? <gasps> you stupid daughter-in-law. I'm sorry. I'm not very smart. I don't understand. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I continued speaking in broken and unintelligent sentences. My mother-in-law started to worry that I wasn't going to call an ambulance after all. Her tone softened as she started to stumble over her words. No, I mean, I need an ambulance. So, Katie, she was clearly trying to figure out what to do, perhaps imagining what might happen if she left there alone without being treated. Finally. My mother-in-law began to cry and plead with me to call an ambulance. Katie, I'm sorry. It was all my fault. I, I apologize for treating you so badly all this time. 
I won't make fun of you anymore. So, please. I still want to live. My mother-in-law cried and wailed. I retorted. Well, you should have said that from the beginning, if you understood. But anyway, I've already called an ambulance. Right after my words, the distorted sound of a siren started to be heard. Then the ambulance arrived, and my mother-in-law was transported to the hospital. After that, my mother-in-law was hospitalized for the day for a checkup, just to be sure. She seemed embarrassed about shouting, I still want to live, over just a bruise, and couldn't meet my eyes. My husband suddenly appeared in the hospital room and asked, Is mom okay? After he finished worrying about my mother-in-law, he glared at me and said, How could mom go through something like this when you were home? What's the point of being a housemaker, Katie? Sighing, I thought, Is it my fault again? And took out a voice recorder from my pocket and played it. It contained all the abusive language that my mother-in-law used toward me all this time. Some recordings were made when she was sober, while others were made when she was drunk. There was no shortage of variation. So what? My husband shouted in disbelief. So what? Can't you figure it out for yourself? Do I really have to stick to this person's side 24-7? Hell no. I endured your mother's verbal abuse all this time. Besides, her injury was our own fault to begin with. Did you know that your mother is an alcoholic? Of course you didn't know, right? You were never home. My husband tries to make an excuse, saying that he had work to do. Don't you lie to me. You were probably sleeping around with some woman named Sarah, right? Why do you know that? There is a fool who hardly ever comes home. And even when he does, he reeks of perfume. Are you still telling me he's not cheating? When I became convinced of his infidelity, I immediately hired a private investigator. I already had decisive evidence, including the identity of his mistress and the frequency of their affair. I don't want to hear any more excuses or apologies. All I want is a divorce and compensation. I never want to see you or your mother again. Goodbye. Saying this, I left the hospital. As a postscript, I was able to successfully divorce my ex-husband and even received compensation from his mistress, Sarah, thanks to a voice recorder that had captured my ex-mother-in-law's abusive language. I was also able to receive compensation from her. As for my ex-husband, he was fired from his job due to his affair with a subordinate. My ex-mother-in-law struggled to recover from her alcoholism for a while, but she eventually relapsed due to the stress caused by her son losing his job. According to their neighbors, the two of them always reeked of alcohol and were often inebriated to the point where they couldn't even have a proper conversation. As someone who only graduated from high school, I don't know if they teach you about the dangers of alcohol in a university. In any case, my experience has made me realize that I need to prioritize a person's character over their educational background when choosing a partner.